Peace be with you and welcome to the start of our first novena in preparation for Christmas. There are nine weeks to go before we celebrate Christmas. As Mary prepared for the birth of Jesus, let us ask her to help us spiritually for the coming of Emmanuel. Sharing a reflection with us is a permanent deacon from Perth, Deacon Albert Atkinson. He shares with us his journey through depression, and his weapon to fight depression was his rosary. As the Holy Spirit helped Mary prepare to do the will of God, let us call upon the power of God to be with us as we prepare for the next nine weeks to receive Jesus. We open our minds and our hearts, and with one voice across the entire universe, we plead. Peace be with you and welcome once again to our Marian devotion. But this time I'm going to use the word novena. It comes from an old Latin medieval word, novena, which means nine. And today we begin the first novena in a series of nine leading to Christmas preparation. So let's begin in the spirit of the Trinity as a community and bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, we are truly grateful to God for the abundant blessings we have received from Him to the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. So let us once more ask her to pray with us and for all of us in these intentions that we have put together, which is global, and we must pray for during this week. Here they are. Let us celebrate United Nations Day with the most appropriate theme, Nourishing Peace, which aims to address how food security and peace are intertwined on the international scale. Just this year, we have seen firsthand how the scarcity of sufficient and nutritious food drives conflict and how violence threatens food supply chains all across the globe. The United Nations is the product of hope, the hope and resolve following the Second World War to move beyond global conflict to global cooperation. Today the UN is being tested like never before. Let us on our part as Catholics become instruments of nourishing peace to our families, our BECs, our parish, and in all our relationships. We possess this nourishing peace given to us by Christ. 
Let us ask Mary to help us be instruments of the Lord's lasting peace. Assist us, O loving Mother. We wish to bring into our devotion World Polio Day to highlight global efforts towards polio-free world and honour the tireless contributions of those on the front lines in the fight to eradicate polio from every corner of the globe. There have been concerted efforts through vaccination programs and community engagement to address polio. Right now, the wild polio virus is endemic in two countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Let us pray for the complete eradication of polio in our world today and for its victims to lead normal and fruitful lives without any stigma or segregation. For them, we pray. Assist us, O loving Mother. We want to celebrate International Day of Rural Women. Achieving gender equality and empowering women is not only the right thing to do, but it is a critical ingredient in the fight against extreme poverty, hunger and malnutrition. We are still in denial that women play a pivotal role in the world we live in today. This International Day, under the theme Rural Women, confront the global cost of living crisis. Let's recognize the work of these heroines in the food system of the world and let's claim rural areas with equal opportunities for all. Rural women account for a substantial proportion of the agricultural labour force, including informal work, and perform the bulk of unpaid care and domestic work within families and households in rural areas. They make significant contributions to agricultural production, food security and nutrition, land and natural resource management, and building climate resilience. For their welfare and well-being and protection, we ask for Mother Mary's intercession. Assist us, O loving Mother. World Stroke Day is observed on October the 29th to underscore the serious nature and high rates of stroke, raise awareness of the prevention and treatment of the condition and ensure better care and support for survivors. The theme for this year is The Power of Saving Hashtag Precious Time Let us pray for all stroke patients who have had their lives and priorities changed overnight. We thank God for their caregivers and loved ones who have to journey with stroke patients with patience, endurance and acceptance. May they never walk alone or feel lonely and abandoned as they are physically challenged and no longer enjoy freedom and a better quality of life. For them, we pray. Assist us, O loving Mother. Let us sum up all our intentions and pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. That was a beautiful hymn that you sang just now. People are worried when they see me sitting. They think that my knees are giving way. No, I sit here so that the cameras will have a better view of this grotto. This is the last week you will see this grotto. Something different will happen next week. So I would like to share with you these wonderful letters that have come into 
our website. Thank you for writing your thanksgiving and petitions. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, I would like to thank you for the numerous priests and religious who remained in Ukraine to provide shelter, food, heal the wounded, provide spiritual support and minister the sacraments. Some people had the chance to go for confession for the first time to be prepared for death. This war brought about stronger faith among the people as many had asked for baptism and wanted their children to make their first Holy Communion. Some have gone to be baptized before the war and make their first Communion. I wish to thank God for the role the Church has played in turning some of the bishops, residents and priests' homes and churches into field hospitals and soup kitchens for the needy and the homeless. This is the church I'm so thankful for and proud to belong to. Thank you, dearest mother, for your protection from your loving children. Dearest mother, thank you for the family reunion we had during the Diwali celebrations. It brought our family closer together, especially with the in-laws. Thank you for the blessings on our Hindu friends and relatives also from your grateful son. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, thank you for your intercession to our Lord Jesus Christ for the satisfactory result of my spouse's annual blood and urine test and satisfactory result for the cardiac test of my daughter from your grateful Catholic son. Dearest Mother, please help me to pray for our son that God lead him in thinking and lead him to walk in God's ways, be in his relationship with his girlfriend and do what is best for them. Since they are in this relationship, it has brought some unhappiness in the family. Help bring peace and love to both the families. Teach me to pray for our son. Thank you, Mother, from your grateful daughter. Dearest Mother, Please intercede to our Lord Jesus Christ for a family friend's dilemma in not being able to get suitable cases for her psychology practical case studies in an overseas university requirements from your anxious Catholic son. Dearest Mother of Perpetual Help, thank you for your powerful intercession to our Lord Jesus Christ for the benign result of our daughter's pap smear and scan, also for the improvement of cholesterol and kidney functions from your grateful daughter. Dearest Mother, please help me to pray for my friend as she's going for a major spinal fusion surgery of taking some of her pelvic bone as bone graft to fuse with her backbone with the implants, rods, screws and a cage. The incision wound recovery takes three months and bones up to one year to heal. I pray for God's protection and successful outcome and a speedy recovery. Thank you from your dearest faithful daughter. Dear Mother, I have been on a career break since late August and am now ready to get back into the workforce. Please intercede for me that I may be blessed with a suitable job which is in line with God's plans. May the Holy Spirit guide me in discerning my decisions along the way. I hope and pray that I can start working by December this year. In the meanwhile, teach me to trust and to have faith in God from your loving daughter. Time for one more letter. Dearest Mother Mary, I pray for a clean and fair elections. May we be able to get rid of our corrupt government that plays on racial issues and unfair treatment to minority races in Malaysia. May justice prevail from your loving son. With all these intentions, we turn to our Blessed Mother and pray the prayer of confidence, knowing that she intercedes for us. Mother of Perpetual Help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. 
Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past, we have so often sinned, but with your help we can conquer, and you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us share with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are our mother also. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She is so loving, so thoughtful, so understanding and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. We end the month of the Rosary dedicating this song to the apparitions at Fatima. Please join in one of your favourites, Our Lady of Fatima. I would like to talk to you about depression and the sword of Mary. And to do that, I refer to my what I call my seven D's. 
how God created Adam and Eve and put them in this beautiful garden. Gave them instructions that they could eat anything in, the, in this garden except the forbidden fruit. But Satan came in the form of a serpent and he deceived Eve. He tempted Eve. She fell. She took the fruit. She ate it. She handed it to Adam. Adam ate it. And both of them then had committed a sin now. God came looking for them. He found out, he learned that they had eaten the forbidden fruit. And so from this deception of Satan, the first day, we meet division. God drove them out of the garden for disobedience. And now division between God and man, goodness and evil. And out of the garden, they had to do, go a different direction. It was diversion now, away from everything else. They had to dig and feed themselves to work hard for their food. So this diversion led to disagreement, discouragement. Discouragement is a tool of Satan because discouragement leads to depression. And depression is where Satan has a hold on you. Depression fills you with a great deal of anguish and fear and frustration. I did a funeral of a Frenchman who had uh, injured his mind. He was a bachelor. He lived with his sister and a husband and a teenage son. He loved camping and hunting. He worked in a factory. He had an accident which affected him. And now he could not work. But one day he told his sister he was going out camping. So what? He had done it before. He went off camping. They found his body. He had blown his brains out with his gun. I had to do his funeral. What do you say in a homily at a funeral of a suicide? A few hours after the funeral, his nephew, the teenage son of his sister, phoned me to thank me, not for the service, but for the words I had used. I don't know what I said, but he said that what I said brought comfort and peace to his mother his father and himself and he thanked me for that. I was now stooping getting into this depression. I had injured my back, I had four pins put in my spine, I had uh, rehabilitation, I recovered, I continued my service as a deacon in the Notre Dame Catholic Church, serving at the altar, preaching, baptisms, uh, ministering to four aged care nursing homes, a chaplain to a detention center for illegal immigrants, home visitation on Saturdays. I was fortunate enough to be able to be at a celebrant for three of my granddaughters, to baptize seven of my great-grandchildren. But here was I now. I had a second injury, further damage to, my, image, damage to my spine. And this time the surgeon would not perform surgery because of the close proximity to the first surgery because of my age, because I am an asthmatic, I just recovered from a pneumonia. There was fear that I would not recover from the table. So there was no surgery. Instead, I had to cope with pain. 24 seven pain in my back. But this affected my legs. My fingers on my right hand have no feeling. I can't lift my left hand up. Walking is difficult. I'm very unsteady on my feet. And now I could not serve at the altar for fear of dropping the ciborium, the chalice. I had to retire from that. And in my retirement, I was left all alone. I was falling deeper and deeper into a state of depression. I didn't share this feeling with my wife or my family. I didn't want to upset them. At night, I'd sleepless nights. I'd lie awake in bed thinking, what's the use of living? Life is no use for me now. I'm useless. I'm a rotting vegetable. And more and more I was getting into depression, falling into despair, which is another D. But one night, as I lay in bed, I prayed the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Hope. This was it. Hope. Despair. I was falling into despair. And I began to cling on to hope. I began to pray, seeking God's help. And I turned to Mary and I used her sword to defeat Satan. What is that sword? The rosary. I prayed the rosary. I felt myself being pulled out of a dark pit. All this feeling of despair left me. I was at peace now. 
I was able to pray. My recommendation to you, my call to you, pray the rosary when you are in trouble, when you've got feelings of depression, pray the rosary, use the sword of Mary. Satan is afraid of the rosary. Satan despises the rosary. The rosary can pull you out of depression, can fill you with comfort, with peace, can heal you. Pray the rosary, my brothers and sisters. God bless you. Together in faith, we turn to our Blessed Mother and pray the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Let us include the sick and all those who have asked us to pray for them, especially the elderly, as we pray this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings. And if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. Mary, from thy sacred image, with those eyes so sadly sweet, Mother of perpetual succor, see us kneeling at thy feet. With thine arms, thy child, from heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who live and reign forever and ever.
Blessed be God, blessed be His holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be His most sacred heart, blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Amen. Our grateful thanks to Deacon, the permanent Deacon, from Perth, Australia, Albert Atkinson. He's very special to me because he married my sister, Aileen. So thank you, Albert, for sharing with us what you went through, a personal experience about depression. Let's end our wonderful devotion. And remember, like Mary, we have to evangelize. And so we end with this beautiful hymn, Go Tell Everyone. I want to see you next week. Goodbye. God's spirit is in my heart. He has called me and set me aboard. This is what I sent me so i'm sending you out to be my witnesses throughout the world the whole of the world he sent me to bring the good news to the poor tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more tell blind people that they can see
We have just begun our novena preparations for Christmas. Don't forget to join us once again and share these beautiful devotions with Mary as together we prepare for Christmas.